Here I've created our distortion grid, and I'm going to show you how this was done. Remember that we're using a reference photo, and we've created an even square grid here. And I have eight squares along the bottom, and I have nine along the side. So when I make my distortion grid, I need to have the same number across the top and side, and they're labeled with the numbers and the letters just like my picture. But that's where the similarity ends. These lines do not have to follow any set order. I don't use a ruler on these. Uh, you can plan to make it look a certain way, or you can just kind of freeform it. And when you draw this, there's two ways you can do it. You can use this grid and draw directly on it. If that's the case, you need to make these lines light so they can be erased uh, so they don't show through on your final picture. Or you can take this and attach it to a window and use it as a light table and draw on top of it while seeing the grid through the paper. I've moved my drawing to a light table. This is the same idea as the window. So you have my grid underneath and I've just laid my paper over the top and I've started creating the contours. And so what I'm doing here, you can see this, is um, I look for my square. So here's like A2 has this little corner of hair. So I'm looking for where does it fall within that box. And so I try to reproduce that here. I'm gonna draw a contour first. And then I'm going to come back in and start adding details, but I'm just looking at, like here on this one, this is 5A, so I'm going to make this little indention. I'm going to try to match it as closely to this square as I can. So this is about two-thirds of the way up, and this is not quite halfway. This little lump here, and then this one comes out this way. And then it takes in this little corner, and then down here you can see how it comes into the hair. And so I'm going to try to reproduce that on this grid as closely as I can. Now I've turned the light table off so you can kind of see what I have here. I haven't finished all the contours, but you can see there's my grid. And here's my image. And I've just matched each of those squares and tried to get those uh, contours put into each of those squished squares, and it creates this distorted image. Now I have to go in and put in my values and really add some realism to it that's really going to make it look unusual. Okay, now I've started adding some shading, and I wanted to show you guys some techniques um, that that might help you if you want to do some kind of realism, although this is a very silly kind of thing. This is a blending stump. If you really have some tiny little areas, use this very, very gently. You shouldn't have to scrub on it too much, but this will allow you to smooth some areas. So, so let's say that I want to smooth in this tone, and I'm working on this area right here. If I want to smooth some of that in and just get an even dark, some of these kind of wrinkles here, it makes it where there's not a harsh line. All When you draw, if you choose to do a portrait, which you don't have to do, but if you choose to do a portrait, um, you want to do all of this with value, not with line. So you want to smooth out those lines those contours and turn those into values as much as you can. Um, let's uh, also look at, where did I put it? How to use a kneaded eraser as a drawing tool. So once you have your values, you want to pick out a few highlights. So you knead this eraser until it's kind of soft and mold it into a shape. And you can pick out those highlights, like right across the bone here. You can pick out just a few of those highlights from this middle tone. Kind of touch and blend. Got this eye a little bit too distinct here. Pick out a little bit of this light across the eyelid there.
go on the side of the head here. So using an eraser as well as a pencil, and a lot of times it's sort of this back and forth motion of, of picking out some highlights, darkening up some areas, go work on another area for a while. I'm using a 6B pencil here so I can get the darks in there. Just practice copying these values, even though we've got our silly proportions. I think these are, the, the more realistic they look like they are, the, the more interesting they become. So have fun on your artwork, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with.